Welcome back everybody. My name is Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking and in this series we are rebuilding popular user interfaces in Swift UI. So far we have rebuilt Spotify, we rebuilt Bumble, now we're working on Netflix and this is the fifth video in the Netflix section. So if you missed the first four, check those out and then come back to this video. They are available for free on my channel in this playlist and do not forget to hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed. In this video, we're gonna continue just doing what we've been doing and building out our second screen in Netflix. We are building Netflix and we got our home screen done. The home screen was pretty hard, but it looks really cool. In this video, we're gonna do, so if you click on one of these, we open up a detail view. It presents as a sheet so the user can swipe it up and down. And we're going to build out some of this view in this video. I don't think we're going to be able to wrap it up in this video, but I do like this view because it presents as a sheet. We're going to add in some buttons here. We're going to add in some micro animations. It's going to be fun. Hope you all are enjoying this playlist. Jump in our navigator, create another core screen. Let's call this one a Swift UI view, and we'll call it the Netflix details view. Obviously, we don't actually have movies. So firstly, when I go from screen one to screen two, I want to pass in the product that I'm clicking on. So if I click on one of these, that product is what pops up here. It's this product name. In Netflix, obviously it's going to be a movie, but let's pass in a product of type product. And we'll start with our mock product for now. Let's create a Z stack here. And on the background, we're going to go color Netflix black, ignore safe area. This screen is actually an off black. It's not full pitch black. So let's just add another layer here with the color.netflix dark gray. Let's go opacity 0.2. So it's mostly black. And then we'll ignore safe area on that one as well. Maybe 0.3, make it a little grayer. On top of this, we're going to have a V stack. So we can see here that there's a scroll view they have, but the, the top section is purposely not in the scroll view. So we're going to create a V stack with the top cell, and then we're going to create the scroll view. So let's do a V stack here. We'll go spacing of zero, open the brackets, and let's get the top cell on the screen. And there's going to be a decent amount of logic in the cell. It's going to include these two buttons, the background image, as well as this progress bar here. So let's make that into a reusable component. I could make it a private variable on this view, but I think it's just a little bit cleaner to break it out because there's a couple actions, like when I click on this and then click on this. So let's create a component, right click new file, Swift UI view, and let's call this one the Netflix details header view. Click create. What is the data that we need for this view? Uh, so let's come up here and firstly, we have a background image. Obviously Netflix has a movie player here and there's a whole lot of logic around adding movie players. We're not going to deal with that in this series. So we're just going to make it an image. So we'll pass an image name of type string, set it equal to constants dot image, random image. We have progress. So this little red bar here actually is the progress when you're playing the video. It moves with the video. We're not going to deal with any of that, but let's add a progress bar here. So we're just going to do var progress of type double, set it equal to maybe 0.2 for the mocks. So the progress will be between zero and one and 20% is 0 0.2. And then we have two buttons. We got this button here, which is the airplay button and then the close button. So let's create two actions, var on airplay pressed. It's gonna be a function that returns nothing. So void. Let's wrap it in parentheses to make it optional and set it equal to nil to start. Copy and paste. And the second one's gonna be on X mark. Let's get this cell going here. Again, we'll challenge you guys to build it yourself. The background layer will be the image. The bottom, we're gonna have a progress bar. So inside the Swiftful UI, there is a custom progress bar that we're going to use. And then we have an overlay. And then at the top of the Z stack is going to be the layer with these two buttons. They'll be in the top right corner. And then we'll add actions to both of them. Go ahead and build it yourself. Otherwise, I'm going to get going right now. So firstly, Z stack background layer will be an image loader view. Let's go URL string, pass in the image name. I want this to be a specific size. So we can see here that it's, it's more horizontal than vertical. So the whole Z stack, I'm just going to give a dot aspect ratio. Let's go of maybe two. So two to one, 
and let's make it fit inside that frame. So we got this nice rectangle that we're going to work with here. At the bottom is going to be our progress bar. So let's add in a custom progress bar. There is a native progress view, but it's not as customizable as the custom progress bar. So that's why we're going to run with it. Let's go with this one down here. Triple click, control M. Selection will be the progress between zero and one. Background color, let's make it dot blue for a second. Foreground color, we'll make dot green. Corner radius. So we're going to make the height of the progress bar. Let's just do 10 and zero for now, just so we can see it. Cool. Progress bar. It's a very simple progress bar. It's literally just basically two rectangles, a background rectangle, which is this, the blue one, and then the foreground rectangle, which is the progress. And so what we're going to do, we're going to make the height of the rect of the progress bar four. And I want the corner radius to be exactly half of the height. So we'll make that two. The background color is actually going to be Netflix light gray. And the, and the foreground color will actually be Netflix red. And we want to align it to the bottom. So let's make the Z stack have alignment of bottom. I don't want it to be fully against the bottom. So on the progress bar, we'll just add some padding here. Let's go vertical of maybe four. Really, really need bottom of four. There we go. And it does go to the edge of the device. And I think that's what we want. So there's our progress bar that looks pretty good. We should add a little bit of animation here. So we'll say dot maybe linear when we're doing, when we're animating progress, it often looks best with either some sort of linear or ease in out, which are symmetrical animations. I'm going to go linear because if this was a movie, the speed of play would be basically the same speed all time. So that's a linear animation. And let's animate the progress on change of progress. We're not going to actually do that animation, but now we at least have the code for it. Bull Lastly, we're going to do another layer with the two buttons. So let's get an H stack going here, spacing of eight. And these buttons have, we can see here a background circle. So let's start with the background layer on these. It'll be a circle. Let's go fill. Netflix dark gray, Netflix dark gray. And I'm going to give these a specific frame just so they are exactly 36 by 36 pixels. So I can see it here. It's aligned to the bottom on the entire H stack. Let's just give this a frame with a max height of infinity. So now I can see here background color got blue. The frame of this H stack is here. So what I actually want to do is align it, alignment, top trailing, top right of it. And we should probably extend it the max width as well. So we'll go max width of infinity as well as max height of infinity and put it in the top right corner. Let's get rid of the background blue. We got our circle up there at least. Let's add in our icon. So we're going to add an overlay on the image and I'm going to do it before the frame. It will be an image with a system name of tv.badge.wifi. Again, it's not the exact icon that Netflix uses, but it is close enough. On the entire H stack, let's give this a foreground style of Netflix white. Let's give this a font of subheadline and let's give this a font weight of bold. It's a little bit thicker. I see this is really close to the edge of the device. So let's just add some padding outside the whole H stack of maybe eight. So it's pushed off the edge. I see that this icon is a little bit lopsided. We can see that it looks like it's a little bit higher than being in the exact center of the circle. That's because some of these icons have different frames. If I look at the actual background color dot red of the icon, you can see that it is centered in the circle, but most of the icon is actually above the center of it. So we're just going to add a quick low that offset the Y by maybe one, just to push it down. It looks a little bit better right in the center of the circle. This is going to have an on tap gesture, and that will be the on airplay pressed. Let's copy this circle and paste one more. This one's going to have the X mark and we're going to say on X mark pressed. And I think that looks pretty good. That's it for this cell. Let's get it on the screen. We're going to zoom out here. We'll go back to our Netflix movie details view, top of the scroll view. Let's add in our 
Let's add in our Netflix details movie header view, triple click, control M. The image will be the product dot first image, the progress. Let's just create an at state private var progress. It'll be a double and let's set it equal to maybe 0 0.2 to start. Pass that in on airplay pressed on X mark pressed. We haven't done anything with those yet. Let's let this render quick. I'm adding the at, I'm adding the progress as a state here because realistically in our app, we would, if this was really Netflix, they're going to have some sort of video player and then they're going to track the progress of that player. And then they'll update the progress and that will update the bar. Uh, that will update the bar in the cell below. This is the scroll view and the scroll view is going to have a bunch of different content in it, but the header is not in the scroll view. So below the header, let's add a scroll view. Let's go vertical. Let's add these scroll indicators as hidden. And we push this to the top of the screen on this screen. I'm not going to ignore the top safe area because when we present it, it's going to be a sheet so that the top safe area doesn't matter. It's not relevant. So that's why I'm going to leave this black area at the top of the screen here. Let's start building the next cell. So the next cell is going to be this section here. So it's going to be this, it's going to have the title, this new row, this top 10 row play button the download button, as well as the text down here. We're going to build these icons separately. So let's work with all of this stuff in the next cell. And again, I'm going to create a reusable cell just to keep the code a little organized here. Generally, there is no performance implication for doing a private variable versus a reusable cell. I do it more, more so for keeping the code organized or clean. I know there's going to be a lot of logic here. So let's right click new file, Swift UI view. Netflix, let's call this the Netflix details product view. Click create and sorry, that should be in our components section. I'm going to move fast here because there's just a lot of code and it's not that fun. So let's put this as a Z stack color black, ignore safe area. And let's get going here. So firstly, I'm going to make a V stack on the screen. And I'm going to give the whole thing a foreground style of white or Netflix white, just so that we can kind of see what we're working with. All right. At the top, we're going to have a title of type string, and I'll just set this equal to movie title. Next, we're going to have a Boolean for whether or not it is new. And if it's new, we're going to put some green text on the screen. So let's just actually, I'll show you guys the, what, what we're building while we're doing it. All right, is new of type rule equals, let's do true for the preview var year released of type string, which we don't really have that data, but let's just make it 2000 var seasons count of type integer. We'll make it optional in case there are no seasons and we'll set it equal to two. So if there's two seasons, we're going to put two seasons here. Again, we don't have this data, but it's a Netflix specific thing. And then we're going to say var has closed captions of type bool equals true. If there are closed captions, we're going to add a little icon for the closed captioning as well. Below that we have top 10. So firstly, if it's in the top 10, we're going to show this row. If not, we will hide this row. So we'll say var is top 10 of type optional integer. And we'll set it equal to six for now. We'll say var the description text of type string equals it, this is the description for the title that is selected and it should go multiple lines. That's going to be this whole text down here. Below that we have a Netflix uses this as like the cast. So it's it usually here says, you know, who's in the cast and it's got all the names. Let's just call this cast text for now of type string. Let's just say, Nick, add your name and add someone else as well. And then lastly, we have some actions. So they click the play button or they click the download button. We're going to want to perform some actions. So we'll say var on play pressed, which is a function that returns void. Let's wrap it, make it optional, set it equal to nil and paste another one on download pressed. Let's start building out this cell again, go ahead and build this cell. If you want by yourself, I'm going to go ahead and build it now. 
This is basically just a V stack with a bunch of if statements. If it's new, show that. If it has seasons, show that. If it's top 10, show this. If it's closed captioning, put that on the screen. Let's get going. So first, I'm, we're going to put the text of the title on the screen. The title will have a font of headline, and let's just make it push all the way to the left edge with a frame. Let's go max width of infinity, alignment leading. Next, we're going to have an H stack, spacing maybe eight. On the left, we're going to say if is new. Let's put some text on the screen that says new. Give us a foreground style of green. So if it's new, put the little new text there. On the right of that, we're going to say the text with the year release. This H stack, let's give it a default foreground style of Netflix light gray. After the year release, we're going to say if let seasons count. So if there are seasons, let's just put text that says, let's put the seasons count. And then we're going to say seasons. So two seasons. And then finally, if has closed captions, let's put an image with a system name. Let's go captions.bubble. And we get that. Again, not the exact icon Netflix uses, but close enough. Below that, we're going to say if it is the top 10, if let is top 10, open the brackets. Let's build out the little top 10 icon here. So let's build an H stack spacing of eight. What does a top 10 icon look like? So let's build a background rectangle and let's give that a fill of Netflix red. Let's give it a frame and it looks like a square. So we'll go 28 by 28. Put an overlay on that rectangle with a V stack. The top of the V stack, we're going to say top. Bottom of the V stack, we'll say 10. And we can't really see it because it's so small. So let's give this a font of system size eight let's make it thicker we'll go font weight of bold i'm going to copy and paste that for the 10 as well but we want the 10 to be a little bit bigger so let's go 16 and then let's get these closer together so spacing here of zero and that doesn't even look it still doesn't look close enough to me so let's go negative four that looks better lastly i want to move it down it looks like it's a little too high on the in the square so let's just give it a manual offset of y maybe two it's too much one that looks good cool top 10 let's just cut that and just make this the a private variable called top 10 icon of type some view you can make that a reusable icon if we were going to reuse it on multiple screens but we are not right now so just put the top 10 icon here and then we're going to continue building and we'll say the text here. So if it is the top 10, we're going to put the number that it is. So we'll say is top 10, the number, and then we'll say in TV shows today. Again, we don't actually have that data, but it'll look fine for our mock version. Let's add the hashtag sign pound sign there. Number six in TV shows today. Cool. Finally, we got two buttons down here, the play button and the download button. We've already built buttons that look like this. When we built our, our hero cell, we have a play button and a my list button here. I'm just going to go to those. So I'm going to, I'm going to look up the Netflix hero cell. I'm going to look for the play button and I'm just going to copy the entire H stack with both of those buttons. Let's jump back to our details view. And below this, let's paste in our H stack. All right. We don't have an action for this right now. At, these are buttons. So let's import Swiftful UI. And let's let them render on the screen real quick. Cool. Actually, it doesn't look so bad to begin with. Let's change this to a V stack. Let's decrease the spacing to maybe eight. Play button looks pretty good. The second one is actually now a download button. So let's go arrow.down.to.line.alt. And let's say download here. I think the color scheme is actually correct. And then let's add the actions here. This is going to be on play pressed. And then this one will be on download press. Font of callout. 
Fawn weight of medium. I think that's fine. Those look pretty good to me. And then below that, we're going to have just some quick, we're going to say the, the description, which we'll make actually optional and the cast, which we'll make optional. So let's come down here. Let's say if let description text description text and we'll say if let cast text cast text the cast text we're gonna give a foreground style of netflix light gray so that it is grayed out a little bit uh, i'm gonna put both of these inside a group so that i can access and add modifiers to them at the same time let's give these a font of callouts and let's again give these a frame with a max width of infinity. Align it to the left edge just in case there's less text. For some reason, it still pushes all the way to the left edge. Lastly, I want to make sure that the multi line alignment is leading as well, just to clarify that I want it to be left aligned text. And that looks pretty good to me. Let's just test out a couple behaviors here. So I'm going to do a V stack. Let's go three of these. This one I will make. The second one, let's do is top 10 of nil. Make sure the top 10 row goes away. Go spacing of 40. All right, so top 10 row is here, is gone. We're going to say is, is new. Also, let's do false. Let's say seasons count. Let's put nil. Let's say has closed captions. Let's go false. So clearly all of this is starting to move away. Uh, we should also make the, let's make the year at least optional as well. So if we don't have that whole row, we can just hide it. So we'll say if let year released, put that on the screen. So let's add in the year released, which looks like it is after is new, is new year released, nil. No. I'll triple click control M to format it. And it looks like. We don't need the third version here. Let's also do description text as nil and let's do cast text as nil. Cool. Got two versions here. Uh, one has all of our if statements as true, one has all of them as false, and both look pretty good to me. Jump back to our movie details view here in our scroll view. Inside the scroll view, let's add in a V stack. Give it some spacing of 16 and open the brackets and let's add our Netflix details product view. Is that what we called it? I think so. Triple click control M. The title will be the product dot title. Is new. Let's just make it true for now. Year released. Let's go 2024 because I don't want to deal with making mock data. Let's pretend like there's four seasons. Let's pretend like it has closed captions. Is top 10. We're going to it's number six. Description text, let's go product.description. Cast text, let's actually just keep it as a cast. And I'm going to say, Nick, um, your name and someone else, just to kind of simulate what it really looks like. On play pressed will be an action. On download pressed will be an action. And it should pop up and it's looking pretty good. I want to add a little bit of padding around this. So on the whole V stack, I'll just add a padding here of eight. All right. That is it in this video. In the next video, we are going to wrap up and take this home. In the next video, we are going to build some micro animations. We're going to build the final little grid view down here. Then we'll add the routing and wrap up Netflix. Thank you guys for watching. As always, my name is Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.